Thank you. Thank you. No, Aaron. Open. 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 I hope Hugo wasn't watching too closely. I was all feet. It's the longest rehearsal I've ever had. Another minute and I'd have dropped. And how about a lift? Have you got it with you? I wish I had. But Marky will have something. He'll be outside. Maybe I should tell you, Marky isn't the easiest man in the world to resist. I know what I'm doing. Before you two go, see me in my office. You uh, wanted to see us? Oui. For weeks now, you've both lumbered about like two elephants. The feet, they never left the floor. The bodies, statues, stones. The face, green masks. Grand Guignol, lifeless. So I shall be brief. You file to go pick up your checks at the cashier. Why, you... Please do not excite me. Let's not waste time telling him what he can do with his job. Come on. You go, Rita. I'll see you later. You go. I'd like to keep my job. No, I'm sorry, more, no. But I help support my brother. I send him to college. Brother, mother, mortgage, farm, being caught. Always something is being supported. Always somebody is sending somebody someplace. But the answer is still no. I know this man, Marky. I see what he does to people. I feel very sorry for you. Save your sympathy for somebody who needs it. Hi. You're through early today. I'm through, period. Well, what do you mean? Well, just that I lost one of a girl's best friends. Her job. So now you got a new one. Friend or job? Both. Starting now. You're the boss, friend. <laughs> Like your new job, beautiful? You'd make a girl like anything, including you. Why don't you take care of the guests? All right. Quiet, everybody, quiet. Music, professor. All right, you generous people. You are here to enjoy yourselves, and I am here to see that you do. For your pleasure tonight, we have a special offering. Some people call it madness, others the devil. But if it is the devil, he's helped to send my baby brother to college, hasn't he, Marky? Collect the dough, sweetheart, never mind the speeches. Two dollars a stick, ladies and gentlemen, two dollars. One for Marky, one for Annie's brother. Dig into your pocket for that big, beautiful, green stuff called money. Take it easy, Ann. The kid might walk in. Who's working the fingers to the bone? Annie, that's who. Who'll be the first to cut up a touch with me? I will. Bobby, where have you been? Little boy shouldn't stay out so late. Bobby, you're rude. Now I know who Marky is. And what he is. And you too. Blow, kid. Go buy yourself a double malted. Come back tomorrow.
clue. A lead to help crack a case can be a funny thing. Sometimes it doesn't even take much to find. Just someone with enough courage to bring it out in the open. Homicide listened to Hugo's story, then transferred it over to Captain Hayes and the Narcotics Division. It was a simple story, but with tragic implications. A story like so many others from so many people, full of ifs. If only he hadn't been afraid. If only he'd turned Marky in. If only he'd listened to Anne and not fired her. If, if only Hugo could make a positive identification. You never know. When you least expect things to happen, they happen. From that minute on, Marky started living in a fishbowl. Lieutenants Mason and Tyne had a string on him 24 hours a day. They got up with him in the morning, followed him around like bloodhounds, and put him to bed at night. And sometimes, they even went visiting. The boys wound up doing plenty of homework on Marky, and it wasn't long before they started adding to their program. Subject, Ann Lester. We've been living with a guy for a week now, Captain. He's a smart boy. Never oversteps himself, never anything out in the open. Been sticking to the old timers ever since that high school episode. We could pick them up anytime. What about his source of income? No score for us yet, Captain. We, um, accidentally got into his apartment. Uh, strictly a mistake. The stuff he gets comes in cans. But unfortunately for us, he'd torn off the label. So all we can do is just sit back and wait till he needs some new stock. Well, keep breathing on him. We've got two things in our favor, time and patience. Lester girl, Captain. The one whose brother was a suicide. Well, what about her? I've been checking with Alexander down at Homicide. There's a gimmick behind that deal somewhere. All through the coroner's inquest, she kept repeating, it's my fault, it's my fault. That's all I could get out of her. She's been on the habit heavy ever since, with Marky's help. If you pick him up, if he passes, it may blow the works. If you don't, Marky will have that girl turning cartwheels. She's young and attractive, Captain. You can't tell how much Marky's poured out his little old heart to her. All right, boys, put the bite on him. You got him, boss. Rita, come on. Relax, boys. I'll be with you in a minute. Relax, she says. I'm three years older since she went in to put on a hat. Friend, never rush a woman in anything. Took you all this time to put that on? I had to curl my feathers. Like it? It's a present from you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now that the fashion show is over, where are we going? I thought we'd see Anne. She's having a rough time. Blames herself for what happened. She's pretty bitter. Can we console her and, uh... Cut up a touch, too? Maybe. Hello. It's Anne, Marky. Oh, I've got the shakes bad. Rita's coming over. But it's you I want to see. Thanks, Marky. Get going. Turn right at the next intersection. What'd you do, get lost? Just keep your pants pressed under that wheel, bright boy. Look, friend, I'm a big boy now. I like to go riding with girls. I've got an appointment to keep. That's right, with Mr. Trainer. In that case, how can I argue? 